Hello and welcome to the video. This is a look at something that's just been released today from Toolkit RC. Now, a charger like this is an investment in the hobby. Getting a good radio, a good charger, a good set of goggles are all things that will last you for many, many years. And it's worthwhile getting a good one because when you do, you will get five, six, seven, eight years out of it. In fact, I'm still using radios that I bought back in 2014. So what's that? About 10 years of use. One of the common comments that I get when I look at things like Toolkit RC chargers are reports of problems. And I am aware that Toolkit RC are kind of looking at that feedback. And I wasn't one of those people that was prepared to use Toolkit RC historically for my own day-to-day -day flying. I really love Sky RC chargers and also have real affinity for the Gen Z stuff as well. They seem to be pretty bulletproof. That was until I reviewed the Toolkit RC Q6AC when it came out. That's a four port charger and that is one that I've actually been using ever since it came out. It's relatively compact, it has a wireless charging point on the top. LEDs around the front. The display was a bit weird, but I've kind of got used to what it's actually telling you now. And it actually works really well with the LED statuses around the edge. And I have been using it and it's worked very well. But this latest charger here is this M8D. Now I'm recording this before it's released with the information that's been sent to me. This is a review unit and it's expected to be about $140 or about 140 euros. So the highlights of this thing are that it has a screen that both folds up, which is a feature that I really like, but really interesting, they've made it capacitive touchable. So it's a touch screen. There are dual channels on this, so it has DC 1600 watts or 800 watts times two, or maximum of 50 amps in sync mode, or 30 amps for two channels. PD has 65 watt fast charging and it also has a battery destruction mode. I'll show you that in a minute. I like the ability for chargers like this to take a battery down to completely empty. The way I do it at the moment is I just plug in a automotive light bulb and leave it out in the log burner in the garden until the light bulb goes out. Now I've often wondered why some of the larger screens that we're starting to get on devices like this aren't using graphics and things like touch to make it very easy not only to operate the charger but to monitor the charge when things are going on because lots of chargers tend to have nice screens but then the actual buttons to control them are a little bit counterintuitive things like long press the button does this short press does that you have some kind of roller button it can be a little bit tricky once you've got the hang of it though it can be relatively easy to manage however with modern devices that we're all using tablets and phones having some kind of interface that kind of behaves in a similar way with touch seems to make a lot of sense let's face it we even have touch on things like the radio master htx radios now so that's why I was interested when I was offered one of these to have a look at for review because it does have that large color screen. It also has the touch controls and it also has that ability to have the screen and angle, which is great for when you're charging by the side of you. You can actually just look over your shoulder and instantly see from the screen exactly what's going on. All really good ideas. So let me just very quickly plug it in and show you what it's like to use and the options that are available in the menus. So let me take you through the menu and how everything works. Again, we're going to have to power this from DC only. It is a DC only jack at the back. It does come with the adapt cable to connect it to whatever you want. I'm going to use one of my big fat field batteries that I use for these kind of things. I'm just going to plug it in the back. So there is the fan test, we get the LEDs above the outputs, just like the larger unit that we're talking about. And then we get the input selection. Now this is quite a nice thing, the fact that we can actually tell the charger which input it's working. So if we go in here, we can actually then change which input we're actually using. If we go back, we can change the max power, the max current, so we can turn that down if the battery can't support it, the maximum and minimum voltages, the security settings, the charge settings. So depending on what input you have, you can actually change how it's gonna work. Now that means that if you have a high current supply, like a DC power supply plugged into a wall outlet or a large 
battery lead acid or something, you can absolutely go and set it up to be able to pull quite a lot of current. If, however, you're using a smaller battery like this, you can set it so that the maximum current it will pull from the DC supply is going to be safe. I'm just going to leave it as standard at the moment just so you can see how it all works. This is the main screen. On the top, we have the input voltage, the current that's been pulled, and the watt hours as well, the USB details, and also the internal temperature, the fan, and also the SD card status. Now, to actually get it all to work, let's plug a battery and we'll have a go. Pressing either of these sides will get you the info. So it will come up here and show you the voltage. We'll see all that a bit more detail. And if we click on here with standby, then we have the battery selections. And these are kind of a preset thing. This is, again, something I quite like about this, where you can have them all set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to change one of these and we're going to modify it so that we're going to set it. So charge current is two. It'll go down to 0 0.1 amps. It'll go all the way up. And again, that this is one thing that I'm finding a little bit is that things don't drag, which is what you naturally want to do. You have to just kind of tap the screen and the, the cursor kind of jumps around. That is one of the kind of things at work. So if your fingers are particularly dry, or I know uh, some of my friends who are a bit older struggle to use mobile phones, uh, modern mobile smartphones, this might be a little bit of an issue. So that might be something to think about. I'm um, not going to go all the way up to 28.9 amps. We'll just set it down here to something like uh, 2 amps. However, you can select it and control it via these controls at the side. I'm going to set it to 2.2 .2 amps. I think that's, a, to me, that still is an easier way than just tapping the screen, even though the touchscreen is one of the big features of this. Battery types are LiPo, lithium high voltage, LAFE, lithium ion, LTO, user, nickel metal hydride, PB or lead acid, UAV battery or a power supply, we'll keep it on LiPo. Modes available are charge, discharge, storage charge, and destroy. Like the fact it's got destroy, that's very handy to take a battery down to completely empty if you're going to get rid of it. So we'll put it on charge. Again, sometimes clicking the bit you want can be tricky, but navigation via the buttons is always an option. End voltage of 4.2, battery cells, it's going to auto detect. So we'll confirm with that. Let's plug a battery into port one. So I'm just gonna charge up one of these little tattoo numbers that I use in some of the small wings and planes. So we'll plug the power in first. I would always, I would always recommend you that you always do it that way and then any uh, current spikes that run around go through the large connection. Plug in the balance tap. And then we're gonna click on start. Confirmation on the screen, charge to 16.8 volts. Click OK. And away it goes. And as you can hear, it is quite loud. It does have the information on the SD card, so the kind of the audio files. So that's very handy. You can see here it gives you charging. It gives you an idea of the amperage that's in use, where we're up to in terms of the kind of watts that's being supplied. If we click on here, we also get the individual cells. And then we can also, if we scroll across, get a nice view of the currents as well. And here we go, just going across for the final information, charging LiPo and stuff. It would be nice rather than scroll if just tapping these went across. This interface looks really neat, but actually I found in operation, I would want to have that kind of information up here on the screen or a little bit easier to get to rather than just turning things on and off and having to scroll around. It feels a little bit like it's a version one of the interface where some of it hasn't been optimized for use. Obviously, when it has charged, it's going to let you know the, the situation. Like its bigger brother, it has LEDs on the front. If I kind of put my hand over that, maybe you'll be able to see a bit clearer. Clearer, there's an LED at the top, then I think it goes blue when you're into the final bit of the balance charge, and finally it goes green when it's ready. But the really nice thing about this is that if you have it maybe charging behind you, again, I would always use a LiPo safe charging bag or something. Don't do it like I'm doing here just for this demo, it's just easier to show you like this. But I like the fact that you could have it 
somewhere near you and while it's charging away not only is it going to announce to you what's going on but the fact that the screen can be pulled up pushed down like this means that you know you can have it pretty much vertical if you look behind you rather than having to stand up wander over and peer at the screen to see where the charge is you can get this view i would just love it if there was options or different setups and i guess this is something that they will offer in firmware upgrades and things for this display to be a little bit clearer because seeing you know this current down here of 2.1 amps what does that actually mean ultimately what i'm interested in is how are the battery voltages in each cell doing um, and also you know how long do i have to go so hopefully this will be improved as time goes on so the initial impressions on this are reasonably good uh, i'm sad that this isn't ac and dc as dc only limits its ability to be used with all kinds of power supplies so i'm guess this is something that you could use if you already have access to a big dc charger obviously there is the cable in the box now that allows you to make some kind of cable remember it's xt90 at the back so if you're going to power it from a battery you're going Need a XT90 to XT60 connector if it is a big battery that you're playing with. So far, the performance that I've had in the time that I've had it has been good and the charges are solid. The volume is very nice and loud and the sound files play clearly. And I like the options that it does have things like log files on the SD card and other options too. No remote monitoring that I can see via Bluetooth or something else to your phone, but I'm guessing with this big screen, they're thinking that you don't need something like that with some of the more basic chargers where you have access to a very pretty user interface actually on a phone or a tablet. But one of the things that I really love is the fact that you can configure the DC input for the maximum current and wattage that you can pull from whatever supply. So if you're at the field and you're run, running off a relatively small battery just to top up a flight battery before you chuck the wing or the quad again, it could be really tuned down. Or if you're using a big lithium ion pack like I tend to here, or a big DC pack, you can set it up for something that's appropriate for that DC power supply so you don't draw too much current or overtax that DC supply. That's a really, really smart idea. I'd like to see that on more chargers that have a DC power input. However, there are things to be aware of. I'm not sure how it will stand up to repeated use. I can't comment on that. Again, my four port charger that I've had here for a while is still performing really well and I actually really like it over my Q200 from SkyRC. It's just a little bit smaller, has some nicer features. But in terms of this new charger, well, so far so good. The touchscreen, as I've already mentioned, isn't as intuitive as I would like. Being able to kind of click on something and drag it around isn't something that it can currently do. Don't know whether that's something, a limitation of maybe the touchscreen technology or the user interface that they have designed. It could be a little bit more intuitive to use. User interface design and optimization is non-trivial and I would really like them to see a little bit more thought going into the displays on Toolkit RC chargers because I personally find that they use a lot of space for stuff I'm not interested in knowing about and the things like the battery voltage, time to charge, percentage charge, all those kind of things are kind of hidden away in the middle of all the cluts. And I think this user interface, this version of it anyway, has definitely been designed to look cool rather than actually give you the information that you want. Maybe in the future, there'll be upgraded versions of the interface that will allow you to choose your layout and have the information that you want displayed ready so it's easy to see. That would be a really cute touch. Toolkit RC, if you're watching this, please do those kind of things through firmware updates. It is a fingerprint magnet, of course it is, so be aware of that. It'll never look clean and tidy once you start using that touchscreen. That is one of the downsides. But I'm going to start using this as my field charger. I'm going to put it in the bag and it can go to the field. And if I have any updates, I will let you know. But if it performs as reliably as the four port charger that I've been using for a while, that's a good thing. So it looks like Toolkit RC appears to be listening to the feedback. And the last couple of chargers I've had for them are the kind of chargers that I'm actually prepared to use in my day-to-day -day flying. However, I just wish to put a little bit more effort and thought and testing into how those beautiful full screen displays are used to give you the information you need to see at a glance when you're charging a pack. 
Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.